So if you think about most of the diseases of aging, what happens is things fall apart. So it's, we call this degeneration. So your eyes don't work as well, your heart doesn't work as well, your muscles don't work as well. That's degenerative pathology. And cancer is a very different kind of age-related disease. So cancer is what, what we call a gain-of-function disease. So in order for a cancer cell to kill you, that cell has to acquire new capabilities, new, new functions. That's not degeneration. So the question we asked is, is it an accident that with age, degeneration goes up, and with age, cancer goes up? Or is there a common biology that links those two processes? Because if there's a common biology, then we have a handle on a basic aging process that could drive the whole aging process, which is what sets us up to be vulnerable to all of these diseases. So that's why we started studying cancer. And the short answer is we think that there is a common process that drives the gain-of-function disease, cancer, and drives the degenerative diseases, neurodegeneration, weak muscles, your eyes not working as well. And we're intensely interested in understanding not only how that process works, but of course, what we can do to slow it down or to stop it from having these deleterious effects. So you say, unless we can stop cancer first. If we could, st if we could really stop cancer, which, I'd which say... You haven't I, done a very good job yet, right? Yeah, I mean, to be honest, I think the hard nut that we're going to face, the hard wall we're going to face in extending human longevity is going to be cancer. That's a very, very tough disease. Because think about it, what causes cancer? Mutations. What causes mutations? Cell mm. division. Major, major source of, of mutations that drive cancer. So we have on the horizon potential therapies to treat degeneration, stem cell research. We've all heard about the miracles of what stem cells can do. We, we are not there yet, but in theory, we can put those cells in, they can proliferate and make new neurons or new muscle. But that cell division process puts that stem cell in danger of becoming cancerous. So the way we look at it, this is a very um, central part of the aging process in complex organisms like mice and humans. And we have to understand it, and we have to understand how to slow it down or stop it. I'm not so sure we'll ever stop it, but maybe slow it down or, or have it, its incidence very much decreased. Otherwise, I don't think we're going to see real substantial benefits to longevity. You said something fascinating, because people say, pitting a lot of hopes on stem cell research. Yes. But if those stem cells are subjected to the same cell division and mutations... That's right. Every stem cell is a potential cancer cell. See, this is just a shocking thing to me, because I, I mean, I, my, my newest child, we got their, you know, cord blood and put it away, and, yeah, I, and, yeah. and, and, and so you're trying everything yeah. and, and to look course, at the future. And of course, you know, if the choice is living the last 20 years of your life with sarcopenia, weak muscles, or neurodegeneration, your brain's not working, and stem cells can do something about that, and, and then you die in the last year of life of cancer. Maybe that's an acceptable trade-off. I don't know. But really, the challenge is going to be, for all stem cell therapy, is going to be keeping those cells from turning cancerous. It's, it's a big, big challenge.